November and I'm feeding some sugar syrup. What's better, sugar syrup or honey? I would have to say honey. But in times of need, your sugar is your go-to. So your sugar is going to be your emergency feed. It's going to be your emergency buildup if you have droughts, if you have areas that just didn't provide the nectar that you had thought would be coming in. So I prefer feeding and letting the girls build up their honey stores. This fall was supposed to provide winter honey stores and we had this wonderful, wonderful bloom of goldenrod and it was a little bit uh, late and yet it bloomed and it was an enormous bloom but we were in the middle of a drought so yes I am in a swampy area but the nectar from the little bits of rainfall that we usually get through the uh, fall was not there and so now I'm tasked with feeding and feeding through through winter maybe for my nukes that just I was hoping that would get their nectar so what happens when you feed sugar? Well, hopefully you're feeding a two to one or heavier syrup in the fall. The fall syrups have to be heavier. That way they tend to uh, turn it into stores and that's what you want. If you're just feeding through overwinter, then you that's when you use the uh, fondant and maybe dry sugars. Because you don't want to feed a syrup when the temperatures go down below say 55 after below 55 or 50 the girls just won't take a syrup they'll let it sit until it warms up i have chosen this time around because i have some i, I had a really nice flow in the spring to take some of my extracted honey and put it on them and this is because there are studies out now that you, know, you can find a study on just about anything that if you feed sugar over time your bees don't have the lifespan that they used to there's even a brand new one that just they weren't even considering the feeds they were just looking at bees that bees live half the length of time that they had previously done in the 70s uh, this study that I'm referring to is is bees in a laboratory but they kind of extrapolate that to saying, hey, what's happening out in the hives? So your honey, if you can move from, say I have hive after hive, I have many hives to choose from. So some have more than others. And I will move frames and share until that time comes when one is, the, or at least the strong one, is light. I won't feed till the, till the time that they're light because I'm not going to kill two hives into trying to save one. This hive has 10 frames of honey. Basically most of it is capped. And it's because I've left the end of summer honey. I have not fed them and goldenrod is about halfway done. There's still plenty out there. I wish we would get a little rain. We're in a drought, so that doesn't make for great nectar draw, but I am in a swamp, so the roots are reaching down. Rain would be a little easier. So, this goes hand in hand. This frame is going to help a smaller hive and it will carry this hive through winter and into spring. Honey is the best feed for your hives. I'm going to replace the two frames that I take out with drawn comb. That way they can go right back, refill, make the best of their time. And I will then put this on a smaller hive. It gives me ample room then to 
put more honey on her if I need. See this one, they're already starting to fill. It was above the honey box, the honey super. They'll fill that right up. They've already started to fill in around the brood nest. So that's that for that hive. And the two will go right in the middle. Right in the middle there. One, two. Don't worry about any residual bees on them. All my hives are healthy. One of the things is, is if you had a hive and you knew it's full of honey, but she absconded or dwindled and died or whatever, but you know it was like some sort of foul brood, don't use that honey. Make sure they're healthy hives that you're stealing frames from. And give them a good start with honey. Honey has all the nutrition they need, well above sugar. Will I feed with sugar? Sure. But if I've got honey, and I've got honey, I, make, I try to make sure that I have a little extra before going to sugar. Then I'll use sugar when everything else runs out. I don't try to make them make sugar into honey for the fall because to me that's the same thing as feeding sugar. Sugar consumed now or sugar consumed later is still sugar. So this is a new queen for 2022. She's filled out her 10 frames nice. She's not gonna build in this new box, but it does give me a chance to put more honey frames on her. Otherwise I would have to use a shim and I would have to feed back syrup or a bag of honey. And this makes it that much easier that in the fall or in the spring, she has room to just go crazy. Now remember, I am in the basically the subtropics, so my winters are fairly mild, even though a couple of weeks ago I was sweating my butt off at 90 degree humidity, and last night and the night prior we were in the 40s. So, can things change? Yes, indeed. You have to be ready for all this climate change. That's why if you take all that honey and just expect syrup to suffice, I think you're, you're putting all your eggs in one basket. Honey is made for them. And sugar is, is not as good. Imagine eating hot dogs all your life. Mom, I don't mean to alarm you, but there's an ape in front of the camera. <laughs> Thank you. Now I have an easier way to feed this hive, the frames of honey that I have from some of the girls that we kept full. Once that's depleted, if I'm not back up into spring, then I will feed sugar syrup if needed. It's not a bad thing to feed their sugar syrup in the sense that you're keeping your hive alive, but if you have honey and you have sugar, which is the best? Honey. Do the best for your hive and then your hive will do it in return for you. Thanks. So that's something that you should think about. Don't take down a hive. Don't, you know, starve a hive to feed another hive that's starving just use your sugar use all that but my stores are not like that yet and i won't won't go to that point so i i prefer to feed frames and then from there i'll feed the extracted honey and at this point that's at this point this it's it's running into more 
money and it becomes less cost effective now cost effective if I had you know 10 hives my cost effectiveness is probably in feeding back their honey and that's because I can I'm not relying on that in any way that that honey should just go right to your bees I have a lot of hives and that's why when you start seeing more commercial beekeepers more sideliners they're gonna opt into the sugar and or high fructose corn syrup I won't do the high fructose corn syrup and the sugar is the way for me so I will now use sugar and that's because honey in my area sells at about two dollars a pound and that's the kind of a, a low honey rate but sugar is at 60 cents a pound so there's your math right there but long term it, what are your costs so you have to kind of balance it out how many hives do you have what are you feeding and how long will you feed and you know if you're feeding long term and there's not honey coming in you can't have a hive exist off of sugar it's kind of like you know living off of just spaghetti with no sauce and no vegetables just not going to work for you wouldn't, wouldn't work for anybody or if it does it tends to make a very sick animal honey should be your first go-to for feeding especially fall feeding sugar can shorten the life of your bees so you shouldn't be taking all their honey. You should be in mind that the dearth is coming and then fall feeding. And too many people I see depend on their sugar as building their stores. Sugar can shorten the life of your bees. There's studies on it. If you don't want that to happen and you have winter losses one way to help that is feeding honey and honey in the frame is the easiest way to do it honey in the frame you just slide it into your nuke into your lower hive you have a bigger hive that can make it fine sugar is for when you do not have your honey stores in place and you have nothing to feed them back Sugar could be considered cheaper. I get that. And in some sense it is. It's 22 cents a pound or something like this, maybe 50 cents a pound. But in terms of the life of the bee, it's expensive. So I don't take my honey stores from every single hive. And I try to leave some, especially knowing because I do all these nukes that some of these late nukes aren't going to have time to put up their stores and I want to give them honey instead of sugar. If, if I was a small, very small beekeeper, sugar should be just an emergency feed. It shouldn't be your go-to. If you took too much honey, especially if you took honey from a first year hive, that's on you when you have your winter losses. Don't go crying to anyone else saying, I don't know why my bees died. That's crap. It's because you starved them. And then, not only did you starve them, but you'd expected them to eat sugar and survive on that. That's on you, not on the bees. Mm -hmm. So think about that while you're preparing to give away all that honey at Christmas time. So I hope this helped you with your feeding. I hope that you just take it as to something to think about. Because I don't think a lot of new beekeepers realize that they shouldn't be relying on sugar. Don't lose your hive because you don't want to feed sugar. Feed it. Don't lose two hives in trying to save one. And try to remember that, you know, flows change and with this climate change, it's 
each season is going to be really, really different, and we have to plan differently as beekeepers. We're going to have to maybe leave a little bit more on because honey isn't going bad when it's sitting on the hive. Because if I left, I did leave a lot on, and I still am in, in the point of having to feed. So we're all going to be in this predicament. It's just something to keep in mind, and let me know what your thoughts are. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click the subscribe button, click the bell for notifications, and until next time, happy beekeeping.